I think the best way to start this review is to talk about what I was like about four to five years ago. Now, I, like most people, most boys, in fact, when they're 13 to 14, was a complete goddamn cynical asshole. And what most cynical assholes do is that they will act like they know things even though they don't know shit. Now, one of the things I did was that I was uh, I acted like I knew everything about Shakespeare because like the pinnacle of literary intellect was Shakespeare. I knew that, but I didn't read shit. I never saw a single film. I never read or seen the play, but I acted like I knew shit. Um, and because of that, because there was such a lack of basic basic intellect there, I thought Romeo and Juliet was this sappy doe-eyed love story about the over-romanticization of young love and young death. So I instantly hated it, even though I never read it or seen it or, you know, in, I never got close to it in any shape or form. Thankfully, unlike most people, I grew out of it. Um, I read the play. I haven't seen the play yet. Um, I read the play. I read the novelization of the, of the play. Um, I've seen the 90s version, which is fucking terrible. But overall, my opinion about Romeo and Juliet has completely changed. I think, and this is my personal opinion on Romeo and Juliet, the play in itself, and the film also, because it's very close to the play. Um, when I was young, I was very cynical about young love. But I think the point of Romeo and Juliet, and this is just a personal opinion, this is not... Uh, you know, cemented in stone kind of ideal for Romeo and Juliet. This is how I perceived it. I think the point is that they... I think the point is that it's not about young love being romanticized. I think the point is that they are kids. You know, young love is exciting. It's somewhat pretentiously poetic. There is some... I hate to say this word because I hate this word so much. There is some innocent beauty to it. And you can't deny it. There's that's the point of young love. The film, the the film or the play is not trying to romanticize it. It's just trying to portray it in the most realistic and slash theatrical way possible. And it does a damn good job at it. Um, and the tragedy is not that they die. The death is the result of the tragedy, in my opinion. Um, I think the real tragedy is is that. It's the fact that, that the cause of the death was from the hatred of others and not from themselves. Romeo and Juliet caused the death, but the reason they died and the reason they got to that point wasn't by them. It was mostly because of the hatred of others. And because that hatred pushed them towards that limit, that's why they, that's why they died. And... I think not only does that show such a strong um, storytelling element of, you know, conflict, but it also makes the love st seem much more legitimate and stronger because it's still young love, but because their surroundings are so filled with hatred and conflict, it makes the love feel more tangible and realistic. And I think that's why Shakespeare was a fucking genius when he wrote and just thought out this whole arc of Romeo and Juliet. So I think Romeo and Juliet is a very good play. It's There's a reason why people still quote it. They still know some of the lines. There's a reason why people who don't know anything about Romeo and Juliet know what happens in the end. It's that good. But here's the thing. Shakespeare is one of the hardest pieces of literary art to bring to film because it's so theatrical. And it's obviously so much for the stage than for the silver screen. This film, unlike most movies, I think, does this translation to the silver screen almost perfectly. This is one of the best films I've ever seen. Easily. Easily one of the best films in the 60s. Easily the best adaptation of anything done by Shakespeare to the screen. It's the dialogue has almost impeccable English and it flows really well for something that was translated from a really heavily theatrical play. Um, the acting is beyond great, and I think the acting really helps 
um, the dialogue flow well because each word has such weight to it. There's this scene with uh, Mercutio, or I think it's Mercutio. I, I don't know how to fucking pronounce these names. If I get some wrong, don't go ahead in the comments and correct me. But Mercutio, there's this dream monologue where Mercutio, and he just walks into the square, and he's, he's just doing this grand monologue in the night, and it's one of the best actings acting scenes I've seen in movie history, quite frankly. It was just so good. I was kind of speechless. I was just staring at the screen, my jaw on the floor, and just going, what the fuck? This is way too good. Um, but here's the thing. The words are still, are still, are still, are still too strong and theatrical. You can't help that. I, I, I'm gonna assume that you, you can't really get over that. You can't really make this Shakespearean dialogue into normal conversational words. You can't do that. And if you do that, that's kind of going against what Shakespeare was trying to do in the first place anyway. So I get that. So how does this film make it feel more like a movie than a stage play? What it does is that it, it basically enhances every other cinematic element besides the dialogue to kind of weigh it down and seem more like a film. The settings are gorgeous as all hell. Um, each shot, and you know, because this, the setting and the coloring kind of comes together and each shot feels like a goddamn renaissance painting. Um, even the costume design, everything just comes together and makes it feel like a gigantic opus of a painting. Every shot. I'm not kidding with this. There's this scene at the party where Romeo and Juliet meet for the first time. Every shot in that party scene is gorgeous. There's not, 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 there's not, ugh, I, I, my brain, my tongue is not working. Um, every shot in that scene has no flaw. There's nothing I can correct there. I, I was just staring at it. And the music. The fuck. The music was composed by Nina Roda, who, com who's com who has composed so many great movies. The Godfather, Eight and a Fucking Half, probably just a, a slew of Federico Fellini films, and he doesn't fail here. Uh, personally, he's he's always been my favorite composer in film in the film industry, and fuck that that. That introduction of that fucking the I I can't explain music. I can't. It's just it it fits with every scene. It's tragic. It's romantic. It's dark. At times, it's warm. It's such a strange, multi-layered, goddamn score that I can't really put it to words. It's amazing. And let's talk about the ending, because I've talked about all the technical elements enough, the acting, the music, the setting, they're all great. Let's talk about the ending, you know, because we all know what happens in the end. They die. We get that. It's tragic. They die. Um, but even though I knew exactly what was going to happen, it's, it's still effective. Mostly because, like I said, the acting is really, really good. And Olivia Hussey, for most of the tragic ending, is kind of lying down because, you know, she's, she's kind of, she looks dead because of the little potion thingy. And most of the acting is really kind of given to Leonard Whiting. Let's call him Whiting for now. I'm, I'm probably wrong, but Leonard Whiting plays Romeo, and most of the acting is kind of given to him. Most of the time is given to him. And he just acts the fuck out of that scene. That's, he's just walking around doing these great monologues, looking tragic as all hell. And for that, th this one line, there's this one line that finally got to me. And it's like, fuck, I I'm all for this. It's when he says, why art thou yet so fair? And he, there's, I can't explain it. You got to see this scene. The way he says that line Fuck, I can easily see why women were just swooning over him, like, and I'm not like that. When I usually see good-looking men who are, like, around my age on the screen, I, I get petty and I hate the fuck out of him. That's why I, I hate 90s DiCaprio. 
That's a personal thing. I fucking hate 90... I hate watching 90s DiCaprio because something petty inside of me kind of comes up and I suddenly... Be, I suddenly want to punch the guy in the goddamn face. But with this guy, the acting's way too good. If I punch him in the face, I'll disturb his acting. So I don't want to punch him in the face. That That's how good the fucking acting is. It made my insecurities go away. So... I think the film's great. It's a masterpiece. There's no denying it. It's so good. It's so fucking good. Go and watch it. It's amazing. Um, masterpiece, Romeo and Juliet, the 1968 version, obviously. Fuck, it's so good. Bye.